Let's give God some praise. That's the one who's worthy of praise. That's the one I love. That's the one I worship. He's my savior. He's my king. He's my God. He's my savior. He keeps me when I don't do what he wants me to do. He keeps me when I'm down on my knees. He keeps me when I'm not feeling good. He keeps me when I don't want to do right. He keeps me. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Mm, I'm thankful for God tonight. I thank him for the opportunity to stand here. I praise God for his word. I thank him for his presence. I thank him for his Holy Spirit. I say good morning to you all and welcome to the Lord's house. The Lord's house. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything, everything, everything that hath breath praise the Lord. That everything, even the children can praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even if you're not feeling good, you can still praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God. Ooh, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he created me in his image and his likeness. He knows all about my struggles. He knows all about my good sides and my bad sides. He knows how I feel. He's, be he's become my song and my salvation. And he daily, he daily loads us with benefits. Daily, day after day after day. If you inhale and exhale that's a blessing that's a benefit that's a benefit you woke up this morning and you didn't put your shoes on your on your head that's a blessing that's a blessing from God that's a blessing from God if he gave you an opportunity to have fellowship with you that's a blessing that's a benefit God gives us to know him Ooh, okay <clears throat> I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he created me. He's my strength and my song, and I'm thankful for God and what he does and who he is in my life. I next give honor to my bishop, our pastor, Bishop Wanda J. Sisko. Yay! Woo! Yeah. She's a great leader, as Elder Rico says all the time, a great leader, and I thank God for how she pours into us individually and collectively. I thank how God uses her to challenge us, to nudge us in a direction of pleasing God. Um, next, I give honor to all the elders, the pastors, and all of you assembled here today. I thank you for how God has allowed our paths to cross, and I pray that you will continue to do as God has called, what God has called you to do. <coughs> okay, <coughs> so let us pray. <coughs> Father God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, oh Lord God, for this opportunity, this privilege, oh Lord God, to be your vessel, oh God, to say your words out of my mouth. I pray, oh God, you would have your way today. Let your word go forth with power. Let it be your words and not what I want to say. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> um, I, I also want to give honor to my husband, who was going to come today, um, but because of some uh, health issue, he, he, we thought it best he stay at home. But I thank God for how he encourages me. He still makes me laugh. <coughs> okay, so we, you can please have a seat. I'll, I'll read a scripture, but you can have a seat. The theme of my message today is trusting God. My theme scripture is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And it says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not 
unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. To trust is to have a firm, solid belief in the reliability or strength of someone or something. So with God, trusting God, that means believing in his reliability, his word, his ability, and his strength. Our strength grows the more we trust and obey God. Our personal relationship grows the more time we spend in the presence of God. We can trust God as he has proven himself over and over and over and over again. I'm sure each one of you have your own personal testimonies of how God has spared your life, how God has blessed you even beyond measure, things sometimes you didn't even ask for it, and he blessed you. So that means that we need to trust God more. God says about us that the scriptures say he made us in his image and in his likeness. He knows the number of hairs on our head. He knows the thoughts and the plans that he had for us. Therefore, we can believe what God says about us. God says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Since God knows everything about us, we can trust him to keep his promises. We are to follow the instructions he gives us in his word and in our time with him. One of the many instructions we are given is in Matthew 6.33 which tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seeking first, seek God first, not last, but seek him first. John 14, 6, 6 tells us Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is your truth, there's my truth, but then there is the truth. And we know that about God. Trusting God is, is more than a feeling. It's a decision we make to believe what he says, even when our feelings or situations would want us to believe otherwise. <clears throat> our feelings and circumstances matter and are worth paying attention to. God does care about how we feel, yet the word of God does not change because we feel a certain way. Right. We cannot always trust our feelings or our emotions alone. They are not reliable to base our lives on. We feel one way this morning. We feel another way this afternoon. We feel another way tomorrow. God sees all of that. However, Malachi tells us that God does not change. Ye Hebrews 13 tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, God is always worthy of our trust. Mm. <clears throat> Trusting not God is not about ignoring our feelings. It is not about pretending that everything okay is okay. Trusting God is living a life of obedience and service to God, even when it's hard to do. Today, I, I want to share with you the ways we develop our trust in God, some of the ways. As believers, we must trust God's provision, his power, and his plan. <coughs> As I studied this scripture, the book of Esther jumped out at me. Let me tell you something a little bit about Esther. First of all, her name means star. She was a Jewish maiden who became the queen of Persia and was used to deliver her people from complete destruction. Esther became the queen after the king became angry with the former queen Vashti. The king was angry with Vashti because she would not come to her, him when he summoned for her. <clears throat> so he chose, he chose to divorce her and put her away, even though she was a beautiful, beautiful woman. And that's what uh, the king wanted to do. He wanted to show off Vashti to all of his homies, all of his... Um, <laughs> All of his invited guests, excuse me. Her, her beauty, Vashti, would not surrender, and her refusal resulted in the king divorcing her. The king then sent his men in search of a new queen, and Esther pleased the king and became the next queen. Unbeknownst to Esther, Haman, the king's top royal official, despised Mordecai. 
because Mordecai would not kneel down and honor Haman, a, a man. Therefore, Haman devised a plot, and the king issued a decree to declare to destroy all the Jews. When Mordecai found out about the decree, he encouraged Esther to talk to the king. As a new, young, and beautiful queen, I believe Esther felt a little out of her comfort zone. When God has wanted us to do something that we aren't used to doing, don't you feel out of your comfort zone? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I know being up here, I feel out of my comfort zone, but this is God and not me. <clears throat> During a time when her people were in exile, Esther had every reason to keep her Jewish heritage a secret. What was her secret, you ask? Her secret was that she was a Jew. Mordecai, who was a royal official and who also raised Esther as his own daughter, insisted that Esther keep her Jewish heritage a secret. We read in Esther 3, 12, and 13, where Haman, the king's right-hand man, had it out for the Jews and convinced the king to send out a mandate to kill the Jews on a certain date. Esther was not some great leader who wanted to make a lot of changes in the world. She was a beautiful young lady who was trying to survive. Esther was a queen who ultimately put herself in harm's way in order to save her people, the Jews, from complete destruction. When faced with the difficult decision of whether to approach the king or plead for her people, Esther's initial response to Mordecai was, how am I supposed to see the king? How? Everybody in the land knew that any person who approached the king without being invited was sentenced to death. That was the law. The only one exception was if the king held out his gold scepter to that person, then his or her life was spared. The excuse Esther gave was she could die. I know I would have said that too. But Mordecai wanted her to see the impact she was capable of having. The impact she was going to have was greater than the risk she would take. <laughs> Esther learned to trust in God's plan, and she took a bold step. She said, if I die, I die. She trusted God, knowing that her fate was ultimately in God's hands. Esther could have remained silent and avoided the risk of approaching the king, but she trusted in God's plan, his provision, and his power, and she took action. Mordecai believed in Esther even when she didn't believe in herself. He helped her to see the purpose and vision that God had for her, challenging her to take that leap of faith. In the end, God used Esther's courage to save her people from complete destruction. <clears throat> Tell me this, have you ever been in a position where you had the opportunity or responsibility to act but were too afraid or intimidated? Maybe it was expressing what you felt, speaking up for a friend or speaking up to a friend. In these moments, our fear of failure, rejection, and humiliation are very real. And so is the dilemma of choosing to either face our fears or, free, or freeze up. Therefore, trusting God requires that we constantly grow and develop our personal relationship with God, knowing he knows all about our fears and or our reluctance to obey and serve. And still, still, he wants to use us. Still, he loves us. <clears throat> similarly, similarly, you and I trust in God's plan for our own personal lives and often take courageous steps to fulfill his purposes, even when it means taking risk or doing the uncomfortable thing. Are you willing to step outside of your comfort zone and trust the plan God has for you? The plan that God has for Esther, she learned to step out and do the uncomfortable thing. Has the Holy Spirit told you to do something, but you make excuses why you can't? Maybe you need a Mordecai in your life to encourage you to follow your God-ordained assignment. Maybe God uses the rich and meaningful messages we here at Beyond the Veil receive Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, even the youth on Thursday, all those Bible studies. And maybe he uses our one-on-one -on -one conversations or even 
he uses us in our personal time to get us to where he wants us to be. Think about that. Esther was probably afraid. However, she chose to act despite her fear and rallied her friends and family around her to fast and pray for her as she spoke to the king. Even though she kept being afraid, she pushed through anyway because her faith in the provision, the power, and the plan of God was greater than her fear. Greater than her fear. Esther's example teaches us that trusting in God's plan and taking bold action can bring about great things. Esther could have remained silent and afraid and avoided the risk of approaching the king, but she trusted in God's plan and took action. Similarly, we can trust in God's plan for our own lives and take bold steps to fulfill his purposes, to start that ministry, to start that business, to get in the um, singing choir, even though you think you can't sing, <coughs> or stepping outside of your comfort zone. Hmm. Hmm. I know personally I have stepped out outside of my comfort zone, and God has blessed, God has proven himself to me, over and over again. So I trust him. I'm learning to trust him more. I'm learning that I just can't sit on the sidelines. I must obey and serve. That's part of trusting God. In conclusion, trusting God is a hallmark of Christian faith. If we call ourselves Christians, then we must trust God. The Bible says don't put your confidence in man because man will fail you every time. Esther's story gives us an, ins an inspiring example of what it means to trust in God. And her story offers practical lessons that we can apply to our own lives. As we face challenges and uncertainties, let us trust in God's provision, his power, and his plan for our lives. And let us draw strength from the examples of those who have gone before us in faith. Do you trust God? I'm learning to trust him daily, more and more. The Bible tells us, now we're going to come to the end of the message, and I'm going to offer you, those of you who are here and don't have a relationship or are not saved, offer you an opportunity to have a, a personal relationship with God. For the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that God from the, that we shall be saved. So if you want to be saved and have that personal relationship with God, then I invite you to repeat after me. I am a sinner. Jesus, I confess with my mouth <coughs> and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Come into my heart, God. I make you Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, rather here in the sanctuary or on social media, we say welcome to the body of Christ.